this video, we're going to look at how we can now use the just-in-time compiler directly in Tailwind CSS since version 2.1 without installing an external package. All right, let's jump straight into it. Back in March, we announced this project that we've developed to drastically improve the performance and also be able to add new features without ever worrying about bloating the development file size. If you've missed that announcement, be sure to check out our blog post here, which I will link in the video description. And in particular, watch the video that you can find in there. This is a deep dive on what the just-in-time compiler is, why we've built it, and what it can do. We initially launched this just-in-time compiler as a separate package. So as you could see here, you had to install the at tailwindcss slash JIT package from NPM, and then come in your post CSS config file and replace the normal Tailwind CSS plugin with this at Tailwind CSS slash JIT. Since version 2.1 of Tailwind CSS, the just-in-time compiler is now available in core. I'll show you now how to migrate away from using this external package and use the just-in-time compiler directly in Tailwind CSS core. The first thing to do is to come in your post CSS config file and revert back to the default Tailwind CSS plugin instead of the GIT package. And so now we're back to our default post-CSS config file. Okay, next I'll come in my Tailwind config file and to enable the just-in-time mode in core, I will add a mode option in my config file and set it to string of JIT. In this example, we've set one single HTML file in the purge array, but it's essential that you have something defined in there because otherwise, if nothing specified, the just-in-time compiler will compile nothing. <laughs> All right, so we have enabled the just-in-time mode here, and that's essentially all you need to do here to get it working. So we're going to look at this index.html file, which the compiler is watching. And here it is. So it's a super simple HTML file, which contains one element with one Tailwind class, text blue 500. So I'm going to keep that file open and split my screen. And on the other side, we're going to have the build slash Tailwind CSS file, which is where our CSS output is going to be generated by the just-in-time compiler. Okay, so in my source CSS file, I've commented out the base layer so we can focus on what CSS is generated from the utility classes that we use in our HTML. All right, let's scroll down here to our body tag. And as you can see, for now, we're using a single utility class, which has been picked up by the just-in-time compiler and generated here. Everything you could do with the external JIT package, you can still do here. SM, uh, motion, safe, focus, hover, text, 3XL. And here it is, a very custom variant stacking class, which is wrapped in a media query for the small breakpoint and a prefers reduce motion query. You can also use arbitrary values with the array syntax. So let me add a class here. And if I go BG dash, and instead of picking one value available in a theme, I can open square brackets and use any color here. So I'll use a hex code and I go FFDDEE. -E, and that's going to generate a new background color utility. And it's going to define the correct colors with the R, G, and B channels. Here's another and slightly more crazy example. I can go min height. And again, instead of picking one of the existing values, I will go here, calc, 100 viewport height, minus 32 pixels. Now, if I move this to the next line for a second, notice that the entire class here cannot contain a single space since a space is a delimiter between two classes. When I save this, you'll realize that the class is generated, once again, without any spaces, but the property min height is the calc value, this time with the spaces. Let me quickly also show you a new feature which wasn't present at the time of the initial launch. You can now flag any utility as important by prefixing it with an exclamation mark. It's pretty useful in a situation where you want to say overwrite some styles from a third-party plugin or really any scenario where you need just a little bit more specificity for one given utility. So let me come here after my text blue class and I will go uppercase. And so use just as is, this would set the text transform property to uppercase. But if we now prefix it with an exclamation mark, bang, you'll see that this class will be generated with the important flag. All right, so in summary, all you need to do to be able to use this just-in-time mode in Tailwind 2.1 is in your config file, add a mode set to JIT and make sure that you're specifying which files to watch in the purge array. If you get these two things set up, you're good to go. And that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.